Go ahead and grab a handful of coins if you have some lying around because this video is going to take you through an exercise to experience how each of the eight cognitive functions works. At the end, I'll recommend a questionnaire if you want to find out what your preferred functions are. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Doris. I'm a certified personality coach with a master's in psychology. And on this channel, as well as in my coaching practice, I share insights to help you dig deeper into who you really are and use that knowledge to take the best, most authentic next step to building the life you want. Little bit of context in case you're brand new to type. Carl Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist and about 100 years ago, he formulated a theory of psychological types. First, he noticed that people's mental energy seemed to flow either to the external or the internal world. This is now called extraversion. He used extra from the Latin word extra for outward and introversion. Then he observed that people's minds seem to be doing one of two things at any given time, either perceiving or processing information or judging or making decisions based on that information. He differentiated the perceiving activities into a focus on tangible sensations or intangible concepts and the judging processes into a focus on objective logic versus subjective values. He then further differentiated these activities or functions into what they look like when the habitual mental energy flows mainly outward or mainly inward, resulting in eight what we now call cognitive functions and which he referred to as types of consciousness. Before we dive into the exercises, two points to keep in mind. Everyone has access to all eight functions but in a different order of preference. Jung stipulated that we come into the world with a predisposition to use our brain in a certain way. So one of those functions, due to a mix of DNA and environment and opportunity, will develop first and foremost as the dominant function that we will grow up to use to make meaning of the world. And that is what he called the type. So DNA and environment refers to the biological and cultural aspects that influence our personality. And think of opportunity as the piece of, of access to practice. So for example, would Mozart have become the great composer if he never had access to a piano? And the second point to keep in mind is that this is a model of opposites, which means Jung says that your conscious mind cannot do two things at the same time, two opposing things at the same time. And if one function is in consciousness, then by definition, the other will automatically be in what he called the shadow. In other words, if the dominant function you develop is, for example, extroverted feeling, then its opposite, introverted thinking, will automatically be the inferior or least preferred. Okay, ready for the exercise? Let's go. Take your coins and really experience them for a moment. Look at them, feel them, touch them, smell them. What are you drawn to do with them right now? When I do this exercise in my workshops, people say things like they want to clean them, stack them, roll them, use them for laundry or flip them over. This cognitive process you are using right now is called extroverted sensing aka experiencing or active adapting. And these aka terms are from Dr. Linda Behrens and Dr. Dario Nardi. I will link their respective books below. Whatever it is, experiencing often involves doing something with the thing, with the coins. So it's external, it's here and now, and it's usually tangible or tactical. This attention in the moment may not last very long though, especially if you're not finding this interesting or you're wondering what the point is. So moving on, I want you to think about how have coins changed over the years? You might say coins changed in size and weight or the emblems on them. This process is called introverted sensing, AKA reviewing or stabilizing with a predictable standard. Comparing what you see now to how things were in the past is also tangible, but the focus in this case is internal and on your memory. So now pick one coin. Once it leaves your possession, what could happen to it? You might say you use it for a parking meter, you might lose it, you might donate it, you might use it to buy some candy. This is extroverted intuiting aka envisioning or exploring emerging patterns. So this, is, this process is using an external focus, but it's interpreting what might happen, linking and connecting it to what it might mean. 
Extroverted intuiting brings things in from another context. But what do you think the future of money is? Will coins still be around in 10 or 50 years? Or is it all going to be online? What about world debt? What's going to happen to that? What your brain is doing now is called introverted intuiting, aka foreseeing or transforming with a meta perspective. Introverted intuiting can be like a flash of insight, an aha moment in the shower, and it often comes with a sense of certainty around it, like you know this is going to happen. It's you have a realization and with that comes a desire to do something about it as well. And sometimes it's symbolic images that you can't quite explain. These were the four perceiving processes. Next up, the four judging functions. Put a logical order on your coins. How can you do that? You can, for example, stack them by size, by value, by color, you know, flip them heads or tails. This process is extroverted thinking, aka segmenting or measuring and constructing for progress. This is something we get a lot of training in in school. It's doing something objective according to criteria you can see. And again, it's here and now. Alphabetizing or stacking coins obviously is quite simple, but there are more sophisticated ways of using extroverted thinking as well, like productivity hacking or setting up databases. Extroverted thinking uses empirical reasoning to make decisions. Next up, think about what principles determine a coin's value. For example, you can judge a coin's value by the material it's made of, by the face value it has in terms of exchange rate, or by how much it will lower your debt, right? This process is introverted thinking, AKA analyzing or gaining leverage using a framework. This process is about analyzing what's there and then classifying it. It's going inside and getting to the thing's essence. Maybe compare it to a framework you know or a system. So it's internal but still objective because the principles apply consistently. This is a form of deductive reasoning. And so we're almost done. Next up, how would you use your coins to improve your relationship with your neighbor? You might, for example, give it to them directly. You can buy an ice cream for them. You can donate it to a charity for them. This is extroverted feeling, AKA connecting or nurturing trust in giving relationships. The focus is external and the basis is subjective because not everyone can sees the same value, but it's about what does the other person want or need and what would make them feel good. So extroverted feeling and feeling the feeling function in general is not about emotions. Everyone has emotions. They are separate from cognitive functions in a way. Connecting is the process of accessing what's important to others and actively doing something to connect with them. The type of reasoning is empathic. So last but not least, what's really important about money and how does it fit into your personal identity? For example, money becomes more important if you don't have any, or you might think that it's not the most important thing at all, that it's energy, that it can be exchanged. But then again, other people might only buy designer clothes or luxury cars, depending on how they see themselves and how they want to be seen. And that can be an expression of their authenticity. So this is introverted feeling aka valuing or staying true to who you really are. Introverted feeling is evaluating the importance of something according to your values. The attention is turned inward to what's important to you and what feels aligned with your core. So it's absolutely subjective. Again, it's not about emotions, but how you feel about something might inform how you use this function. And the type of reasoning is really congruence reasoning because it has to resonate. And that covers the four judging processes. Now that you've experienced all the functions, which came the easiest? For your own self-coaching, maybe think about which one you struggled with the most and how might you practice it. Also, is there maybe one function you use more at work or more at home? This was just a basic primer, but as promised, if you want to see which functions you seem to be using most, go to keys2cognition.com. 
It's a free questionnaire with 48 items. Fill that out. You can add my name as the person who referred you, and then you'll get an email showing which function you've rated the highest and which four letter type might be the best fit for you. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm going to add this video to the Start Here playlist where you'll also find a video about the right mindset, how to answer personality quizzes. For now, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.